Welcome to another video where we showcase 50 facts about an old game that you might not know, or at least remember. This time it's The Simpsons Hit and Run, a game that just about everyone wants a remake of, and also one that so many people have fond memories of, after having played it when they were younger. So let's not waste any more time and get straight in. I'll be focusing this video on levels 1, 4 and 7, which are all based on the same area of Springfield, and includes Evergreen Terrace, the nuclear power plant, and other familiar areas. Okay, the first thing to note is that there's a little joke on Level 1's newspaper cover, which appears whenever you load the level or start a mission. In the bottom right it says, 90% of video games start with easy tutorial level, which essentially describes the missions within Level 1. Of course, the game does get harder later on though, especially on level 7. Did you know that the level's interiors are located out of bounds? They're not actually where you would naturally expect them to be, as in, the interior for the Simpsons house isn't actually in the Simpsons house. Let's check them all out. I'm going to be using a no-clip code that allows me to drive through walls. I'll post a link to the cheats for PCSX2 in the video's description. Also, you can use an in-game cheat to achieve the same results, which is the one where you press the horn to make the car jump into the air. Anyway, so to get to the Simpsons house, you exit the level near the Wiggums house, and then go around to the right. You should see the interior come into your line of vision once you get past the scenery. Once here, you can go into areas of the house that are usually out of bounds such as the entrance hall, where you can see a chair and a portrait of the family, as well as exploring more of the kitchen. Sadly, no corn curtains to be found here. You can also see how the developers made up the background of the interior. It's just an image of what should lay outside the window. Let's quickly check out the other interiors on level 1. If you're interested, I've got some older videos on my channel, where I take a more in-depth look at all the interiors on every single level. They are old and therefore probably not as good as the stuff I produce these days, I hope, but still worth a watch, I think. Anyway, secondly, we have the Quickie Mart. The only section of the interior you can't usually get to is this corridor here. There's a doorway where NPCs can come and go through, and you can also see that there's actually no toilet behind the toilet door. You're going to be waiting a long time, Millhouse. Also, you might notice that when you enter the interiors in this way, none of the gags load in, such as Frostilicus. So you can actually stand where Jasper Beardley can usually be found, and assume the role of Frostilicus yourself. Lastly, we have Springfield Elementary. This interior has a decent area to explore. There's this corridor here where NPCs spawn, much like the Quickie Mart, and you can also explore Mrs. Krabappel's classroom. You can see all the desks for the kids and the teacher's desk, and also the globe and the picture on the wall over the other side. What I like about this interior is that it shows off how the game's developers were very efficient and only included what the player would be able to see from the playable area. For example, only the desks that are required were added in, while the rest of the classroom is empty. Level 4's interiors are mostly the same as Level 1's. This level is set in the early morning, I believe, so the ambience is different. For example, if you look at this still image that's used as the scenery that the player can see out the window in the Simpsons house, it's exactly the same image that's used in level 1, just with the darkness dialed up a bit. There is one new interior to check out though, which wasn't present in level 1, and it's Bart's bedroom. It's located close to the rest of the Simpsons house just over here. Sadly, all of this interior is accessible from the playable area, so there isn't too much to explore here. The most interesting thing you can do is stand behind Bart's mirror, which isn't acting as a mirror at all when accessed like this. Instead, it's just more like a window. 
We'll take a quick look at the interiors in level 7 as well. The biggest difference is that they've all been spooky-fired, with Halloween-themed objects around. That same background image for the Simpsons house is still used, by the way, so it looks like the developers didn't bother to update it to a still from level 7, with the Halloween-themed scenery instead. Outside the accessible area of the interior, sadly there are no more Halloween decorations to be found. As we've seen, the developers were pretty efficient in their work, and only implemented what was absolutely necessary. Bart's bedroom can also be accessed again. As the gags don't load in when you access the interiors in this way, Bart's bed is actually missing, as it's a gag on level 7 only. The Quickie Mart, or as it's now known in level 7, the Spooky Mart, has some Halloween decorations inside now, just like the Simpsons house. All the gags and the inaccessible areas are all the same though, because as we know, the developers didn't waste time developing much beyond what the player can see from the playable areas of the game. On the other hand, there are some subtle differences to Springfield Elementary in level 7. There is of course an orange Halloween-y ambience throughout now, which you can still see in Mrs. Crabapple's classroom. Also in the corridor where the NPCs appear, there are cobwebs around, much like in the playable area. So it's nice that they added these little details beyond what we could already see. Okay, back to level one now, and we head next door to the Simpsons house to the Flanderers. We need to have the in-game cheat enabled to make the car jump when the horn is pressed. I believe you can do this glitch without this cheat, but this just makes getting a car into Flanders back garden much easier. Now you can obviously get here on foot normally, but when you go here with a car, you can clip into Ned's house by going through this particular section of wall here. I must stress, you cannot do this on foot, so I really don't know why you can do it in a car. I assume that the developers never thought you'd get one back here. Also, no purple drapes, what the hell? On levels 1, 4 and 7, there are a couple of loading areas for certain interiors. These are rooms which are less detailed than the actual interior, but they're there to show the player what lies inside. Take Bart's bedroom for example. It's actually not an accessible interior in level 1, but you are allowed into your own son's bedroom in levels 4 and 7. However, the loading area for the interior still exists in level 1. If we use the free cam on the dolphin emulator, so this is the GameCube version of the game you're seeing briefly here. We can take a better look at these normally inaccessible areas. Bart's bedroom has two identical Krusty posters in it, as well as some oddly coloured furniture and a bed of course. The other loading area on these levels is the Quickie Mart. Again we're going to use the Dolphins free cam to see where we couldn't usually get to. We can see the counter, the squishy machine, and several racks of identical products to buy. There also seems to be a set of freezers at the back there, which is similar to where the Frostilicus gag is placed for the interior of the building. There are other loading areas on different levels too, so check them out if you can. Next up, we visit the First Church of Springfield. There's a sign out front, just like in the show, which has a funny message on it. However, there are several different messages that can appear here. Perhaps the easiest way to get it to change is by starting a different mission. The three different signs that appeared when I was recording footage for this video were Homer Rocks, No Shirt, No Shorts, No Salvation, and Now With More Guilt. Did you know that some of the placements of various items and missions were different during the game's development? Take this one for example. In SMRT, Lisa's science project is placed in front of the car, while in the final game it was moved to beside the car, on the Simpsons front lawn. Ok, time to look at another change in the item placement from a mission on level 1. Next is Petty Theft Homer. At one part during the mission, you have to pick up a cooler that Homer previously gave Barney for his birthday. However, it's revealed that it was one of many items Homer stole from Ned Flanders over the years. During development, the cooler was placed further away from the player, and for some reason was subsequently moved closer. 
Here's something you guys may have noticed before, but after playing this game for years, this only dawned on me while I was making this video. One of the traffic cars on level 1 is this glass truck. Which, well, I believe that's what it's called in the files. It's a truck with glass Buzz Cola adverts on the back, as well as some tools. Now, why would these trucks be driving around Springfield? Well, whenever the player takes a shortcut, you usually encounter one of the same glass adverts. I believe these trucks drive around Springfield to go about replacing all the Buzz Cola adverts you smash. Going back to the development of the game, there is an erroneous line of dialogue in the mission The Fat and the Furious. When you reach Mr. Burns, Homer says, there he is, instead of the first line of dialogue he's supposed to say. Here's the start of the cutscene and the pre-release and the final versions of the game. Oh, I forgot my mission. There he is! Fine, I admit it, I had Amelia Earhart's plane shot down. That hussy was getting too big for her jodhpurs. No! See, Montgomery Burns, I know you're guilty! You're accused! Sir? Fine, I admit it, I had Amelia Earhart's plane shot down. Everyone sucks but me. On level 1 during development, there was an extra piece of music which played in the Stonecutter's Hidden Tunnel. It's called Stonecutter's Spoof, and you may well recognise it from the TV show. It started playing towards the end of the tunnel, near Mr. Burns' mansion. Let's take a look. Must. Never. Run. Again. Speaking of Burns Mansion, it was one of two areas that the player could not access on level 1, but would become accessible on level 4. However, can you still get into the mansion on level 1? Well, I'm going to use a no-clip code which allows me to drive through walls again. This code is also available through the cheat disc Action Replay Max. If you try to access the mansion via the front gate, you can do so but sadly the interior of the house doesn't seem to be present on level 1. However, you can do the jump that takes you from Mr. Burns' front garden to the house across the street, which is of course accessible on level 4. But I wanted to try one last thing before I moved on from this. What if you tried to access the mansion from the back garden? Despite not being allowed in the house in level 1, you can still access the back garden from the nuclear power plant. However, you can't usually get a car up here. So I'm going to use the in-game cheat to make the car jump whenever you press the hook, combined with the no-clip code from AR Max to get up here. Once here, you can drive up to the back door of the house. And lo and behold, when you access the mansion from the back garden, the interior actually loads in. This was quite amazing for me because after nearly 20 years of playing this game, I never knew that this was possible. You can even go up the stairs and into the room where a collector card can be found on level 4. It's weird that the picture is missing from the fireplace, and the table from the middle of the room. It's likely because you can interact with these objects on level 4, so they're just not static parts of the level, much like gags.
Also, I noticed you can jump to this kind of indoor balcony here. I assume you can do this on level 4 as well, but whenever I try to make the jump with March, I always fail. For my next trick, I'm going to show you how you can walk into a wall and fall through the entire level. To do this yourselves, you'll need to head over to Springfield Elementary School. Go to the entrance to the playground and go to this side of the wall. All you need to do is walk inside the wall and jump. If you've done it right, you'll fall through the level and land on an invisible floor. If you jump again, you'll fall through the level and into the abyss. But you could just start any mission to get back up to Springfield. Here's one you might have seen before, but it's one that's definitely worth including in the video. When you're in the nuclear power plant, all the PEDs change to power plant workers. And then when you exit the area, the normal NPCs spawn back in. However, there is an easy way to get these pairs to spawn across the level. Once you get to the Stonecutter's Tunnel, go up this ramp here and use the Horn to Jump cheat to go way higher than you normally would. This seems to skip some form of check that the game makes to revert back to the normal NPCs. When you exit the tunnel, you'll now see that all the PEDs are still power plant workers, instead of being the usual ones. Every level on the game has its own special car that you can find on the level somewhere. On level 1, the special vehicle is the rocket car, which you might recognise from the TV series. It's owned by Chester J. Lampwick, original creator of Itchy and Scratchy and it's parked outside his solid gold mansion in Springfield. However, did you know that the rocket car is inspired by a real-life vehicle? It's the Blue Flame, which was a world land speed record holder at the hands of Gary Gablich in 1970, which it held for 13 years. Have you ever taken a close look at the paintings in the Stonecutter's Tunnel? At first glance, they seem to just be people from the Simpsons universe but they're actually based on real-life artworks. According to the Simpsons Hit and Run fandom, the first one is apparently the, of the composer Mozart. This is the closest portrait I could find of Mozart that seemed to match. However, I personally think it looks more like this portrait of Beethoven from 1827. You'll have to make your own minds up about this one. The other painting is definitely not in doubt though. It's almost certainly the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. The pink sedan is Homer's car of choice on level one, and of course it is. It's the Simpsons family car from the TV series. Sadly, Marge's orange estate car doesn't appear in the game though. Anyway, did you know that there are crates of duff in the boot? Now this isn't GTA, even though it was inspired by it. So you can't just smash the lid off the trunk to take a look. You can open it up though, which allows us to take a peek, but if we want to see it properly, we're going to have to use the free cam, which is again available on the Dolphin emulator on the GameCube version of the game. Like Mr. Burns Mansion, part of the cemetery is inaccessible in level 1. By using the car horn to jump cheat or the no clip cloud I used earlier in the video, you can still explore it. The scenery is still quite Halloween themed with the graves of course but also with the withered trees that have no leaves on them. The reason for this is that this section of the cemetery only becomes accessible on level 7. It's not even accessible on level 4. So we've seen that the interiors lie out of bounds, but did you know that some characters can be found out of bounds as well? The reason for this is because certain characters can be found within the game's interiors. One example is Apu in the Quickie Bar. Must. Never. Run! Again! I need food that's flavorful, yet supple to the touch. Might I suggest the new cheddar squishy? It's the latest thing in chilled fats. And also Lisa can be found inside the Simpsons home prior to the Rigor Motors mission starting. They're always loaded even when the interiors they're supposed to be in aren't loaded. When we talk to Apu, we get the usual lines of dialogue from inside the Quickie Mart. However, when we talk to Lisa, we trigger the start of the mission, which makes something interesting happen. 
So we speak with Lisa and then I head over to the school, which is the interior that I currently have loaded. I'm just going to wait for the mission timer to expire, and then the retry mission screen pops up. For some reason, this causes the gags and NPCs to spawn into the interior. As we saw before, when you enter interiors by are out of bounds, this doesn't usually happen. So we can see the entirety of the NPC's movements now. Willy spawns off screen here and only begins moving once we walk down towards the playable area. He gets hit in the face with a rake, Sideshow Bob style, and then runs back through the door that he entered through. We can now see that he's frozen in place now since his actions have finished. It's actually pretty cool to see this from behind the scenes. Here's another famous glitch, but another one worth showcasing in this video. The Fat and the Furious sees you race against Mr. Smithers to Mr. Burns' mansion. To make this mission harder, access to the power plant is blocked off. This means you have to go through the majority of the level to get to your destination. However, if you take your car and park it where the door will spawn once you've led the mission, you can bypass this barricade, making the mission much easier. Next up, we revisit the pre-release version of the game. In the nuclear power plant, there is an echo sound that is added to certain sound effects. Since you're indoors in a large echoey room, you can hear it best when you go to a phone booth and select a vehicle. In the final version, this sound effect was drastically reduced. You'll likely know that The Simpsons Hit and Run was the second Simpsons game on the PS2 after Road Rage, and both games were developed by Radical Entertainment. One thing that was notably upgraded between the two games were the cutscene models. They were much improved on Hit and Run. However, during the development of the game, Radical was still using the older style cutscenes like the ones in Road Rage. And on the pre-release build of the game, there's still one that's left in. And it's the intro cutscene to level one. Plus, there's a special ingredient too hot for the FDA. It'll give you the get up and go. You need to do all the pathetic stuff you have to do. Try new improved Buzz Cola. Cola, must get Buzz Cola. On the mission Blind Big Brother, you have to smash all these power couplings, which is done by kicking them. One thing that the game's developers didn't really seem to account for was the fact that you can leave this area and explore elsewhere. I mean, there's no real reason to do this, but there's also nothing stopping you from doing this. But if you leave the area then come back, you'll find that all of the power couplings have been unloaded, meaning you can't smash them and finish the mission anymore. Even stranger, if you try to walk up to where any of the power couplings were, the game will crash. There's a weird glitch, well, one of several, that involves the fire truck ramp ladder on levels 1, 4 and 7. When you go over a jump on this game, the physics change. Your car becomes faster and more unstable. But these physics only last as long as your car is in the air. However, if you go up to the end of the ramp, then get out of your vehicle and let it roll all the way back down. You will have the jump physics even though you didn't actually go over the ramp. And they'll last until you go over another jump, I believe.
there's an in-game cheat to access all the unlockable vehicles from a phone booth, which is pretty handy if you're lazy and you don't want to earn those Buzz Cola coins to buy them all. However, it also has a secondary function. If you use this cheat after you've completed the game 100%, you can also access all the traffic cars, other mission cars, pretty much every other car within the game. One of these is the Ice Cream Truck, another car which is inspired by the TV series. Except that on the show we see Phineas Q. Butterfat's Ice Cream Parlor rather than the actual vehicle. Anyway, the reason I'm bringing this up is because the Ice Cream Truck was cut from the game, and the only way you can access it is via this method. Rumour has it that it was going to be a traffic car on level 4 but for whatever reason, it didn't spawn in traffic on the final game. There's a swing set in the Simpsons Back Garden, on levels 1, 4 and 7, and there's also one in the park near Evergreen Terrace. The swing set is one of the level gags and collapses when you press the action button near it. The weird thing about it is that on level 7, the collisions for the top of the swing set remain even when it's collapsed meaning that you can jump on top of it, press the action button to play the gag, and then Homer will be standing in mid-air. You can also jump down and jump back up if you can find the right spot again. Sticking with level 7, you'll probably know that only half of the original level was Halloweenified due to time constraints. When you get to the bridge over to the posh side of town, the army is seemingly blocking your path. However, did you know that a small section of the level beyond this point is still solid? Again, you can get here by using the no-clip code I mentioned earlier. The bit that's solid is just the section that leads up to the bridge, and also the wooden ramp that's used to allow you to pass beside the bridge. Also, it's interesting to see that there's still a respawn point over here. When you go into the water, you don't get placed back into the playable area. Sadly though, the stairs that lead up to the tower where a collector card was usually placed isn't solid. Speaking of out of bounds on level 7, there is proof left over in the game that the developers did want to include the full level in this Halloween style, not just the 636 area code of Springfield. One of these clues is that a piece of music exists for the Stonecutter's Tunnel in level 7. On levels 1 and 4, the tunnel also has a special theme that plays which we'll go on to discuss later in the video. If you managed to negotiate your way to where the Stonecutter's Tunnel would have been located if the level was finished, you can hear this piece of music. Once you reach level 7 on the game, you can access one of the best cars of all. The Open Wheel Racer. It has 5 stars for everything except toughness, which is quite the opposite. It only receives half a star in this category, so don't bump it. The reason why this car makes it onto the video is the inspiration for it. Much like we saw with the Blue Flame earlier on. It likely takes its looks from the Dallara Honda IR02, run by Team Penske in the 2002 IndyCar series. Not only is it red and white, but it also has Laramie sponsors on the side, which is a fictional cigarette brand from the Simpsons universe. Here's another interesting difference in the pre-release version of the game. On Rigger Motors, there's an extra final objective at the end of the mission. Once you return to Evergreen Terrace, the game tells you to go inside the Simpsons house. On the final game, this objective was removed and the mission finishes quicker, like this. Let's discuss the music in the Stonecutter's Tunnel in levels 1 and 4 now. What's interesting is that the music used here is a real-life classical music piece. It's Spring by Vivaldi which is part of the Four Seasons composition, written sometime around 1720.
Back to another out of bounds discovery now, and back to level 1 too. If you go out of bounds at this spot here, you can find some unused assets which were likely going to be used in the Stonecutter's Tunnel at one point in the game's development. Just like other paintings, this one is inspired by a real life artwork as well. It's American Gothic, which depicts a farmer and his daughter, and was painted in 1930 by Grant Wood. I think there are three copies of it out here, out of bounds. They're even solid too, and I thought you might be able to jump on top of one, but sadly this just sent me down to the abyss once more. Okay, staying in out of bounds, but swapping over to level 4. If we go out of bounds in this spot here, we can find something interesting. It's a washing machine. Yeah, another unused asset just placed out here. You can even stand on it if you get close to it, and since it's a breakable object, you can kick it too, earning you a Buzz Cola coin and a one-way trip to the abyss. But we're actually not done with this washing machine just yet. Back in the playable area, you can find more of these in the trailer park, specifically at the Munts residence. Maybe the one out of bounds was deemed to be one washing machine too many? I mean, how many can you possibly get through in one lifetime? If we check out the same washing machine on level 1, we're now greeted by the face of a cow as well. Yep, I was as confused as you all are. And I was thinking for ages about where this cow face was actually intended to be placed on the level. And then it dawned on me, the barn near the tobacco field. You know, I never realised that the cow's faces were just 2D, but they always aim towards the camera, so it's not obvious unless you really look. But what if we do the same thing on level 7? What do we find now? A dry cleaner? A whole laundrette filled with cows? No, actually, we find a green splodge, and a washing machine, of course. If we stand next to the appliance instead of on top of it, we can kick it without descending to hell and reveal the green splodge even better. I mean, I guess it's nuclear waste, but if you recognise where it actually shows up on the level, then let me know in the comments section. So, do you remember the Stonecutter's music that could be heard in the pre-release version of the game? Well, it turns out that it was likely going to be used in level 7 as well. Similar to how we were able to hear the Stonecutter's tunnel music, all we need to do here is to go out of bounds in a similar spot then venture to where Mr. Burns' mansion should be, or at least around that area, and you'll now hear the familiar Stonecutter spoof track. Staying on level 7, there's a park near Evergreen Terrace, which is of course present in levels 1 and 4 as well. However, if you go here on level 7, you can hear some ghostly voices of the likes of Nelson and Milhouse. Check this out. Alright, next up is a visit to the Quickie Mart. No, not for a super squishy made entirely out of syrup, but a look at another NPC encounter. This time it's Krusty and he's over here in this corner looking at a magazine. Have you ever wondered what's on the other side of it? Well, wonder no more. We can use the free cam to take a look. It's actually a picture of Mindy, Homer's short-lived ex-colleague from the power plant. She's wearing a dress and the weirdest thing is her arms. They've been crammed into the edges of the frame and they look really odd. Back to the underbelly of the Simpsons universe now, literally. To see what we're about to see, we need to move the camera underneath the map. 
And now we're down here, we can see a duplicate version of Springfield Penitentiary. I've got no idea what it's doing down here, but you can see the proper version of the prison from the play area. It's actually located out of bounds. In fact, it makes up part of the scenery. For whatever reason, this duplicate version was discarded down here. On every level, there is a secret vehicle, like the rocket car we saw earlier in the video on level 1. On level 7, the secret vehicle is an RC car. Now, because it's so small, the game doesn't play an animation of Homer getting into it, like you would normally see if you approached the pink sedan and got into it. Instead, the screen briefly fades to black while your character moves inside it, much like what happens when you try to enter any car while you're standing on the roof. But the thing that's interesting here is that your character actually gets shrunk down to fit inside the RC car. And if you're wearing the donut costume like me here, you can see the top of Homer's donut head sticking out of the roof of the car. On each level there are several street races you can participate in. All manned by characters from the Simpsons universe. NPCs can also be seen in locations that are relevant to them. For example, Ralph Wiggum is located in the Wiggum family house's backyard. You can even speak with him as well. However, here on level 4, Ralph is also one of the characters who you speak to in order to begin a street race. Therefore, there are actually two Ralphs on the level. Or maybe this is Ralpho, Ralph's conjoined twin who was separated at birth and usually dwells in the Wiggum's attic eating buckets of fish heads. In the cutscene at the end of level 4, Marge goes to talk to Grandpa Simpson at the Springfield Retirement Castle. At one or two moments during the cutscene, you can see that Abe has a photo of Homer and Marge's family on the wall. However, did you notice that this photo of the family is in Simpsons Road Rage graphics? Which was the style at the time, and were also used during the development of Hit and Run, as we saw earlier in the pre-release version of the game. Hopping over to level 5. Whoa, wait a minute, this isn't a level that's meant to be included in this video, I hear you say. Well, don't worry, it does tie into the video. I am SMRT. Okay, so at the end of level 5 you get this cutscene, where it's revealed that Kang and Kotos are behind the evil Buzz Cola plot. They're trying to improve ratings for their intergalactic TV show Foolish Earthlings. And in the cutscene, we see a short clip of their series, which shows groundskeeper Willy stepping on a rake and it hitting him in the face. Well, as we saw earlier, this is something we can actually see in Springfield Elementary School in levels 1, 4 and 7. Willy is one character that can appear as an NPC inside the school, with the others being Mr. Burns and Wayland Smithers. Let's take another look at Rigger Motors, which is the first mission on level 7. Homer's old car is parked on the drive, and I bet most of you just used this car for the mission. It's fast and it's conveniently parked. But what happens if you use a different vehicle? Well, once you've almost completed the mission and you return to the Simpsons house, you might notice that Homer's 70s sports car is still parked on the drive. But not for long as when you finish the mission, it disappears. Level 7 has been Halloweenified, if that's even a word, which in my mind means that it's now overrun with zombies, witches, ghosts, and every other Halloween cliche you would actually really want to see. I love this level. Anyway, there are a few things that haven't been given the Halloween treatment, most notably the loading areas for the game's interiors. Let's take a look at Bart's bedroom for example. We can use the free cam to take a better look again. It's not Bart's bedroom with the infamous clown bed from this level. In fact, it's just Bart's regular bedroom from levels 1 and 4. On level 1, if you venture up to the Quickie Mart rooftop, you can find this lovely little patch of garden, which is yet another reference to the show. Man, the game's designers really did their research with Hit and Run. Anyway, there's a certain piece of music that plays here, and it activates once you're up on the roof. There's an entirely separate piece of music that's meant to play in the same spot on level 7, 
but for whatever reason, it never gets queued in. The only way to hear it is to extract it from the game's files. Here's a snippet. On every level there are numerous doorbells you can interact with to hear voice lines spoken by recognisable Simpsons characters. One additional doorbell gag that only appears on level 7 is the doorbell on Groundskeeper Willie's hut. This is absent from levels 1 and 4. Unless you're a bunny Scottish lass in a bunny we killed, shove off! So we saw earlier that there's a bit of ground beyond the boundary of level 7 that is solid. However, how much of the rest of the scenery that was modelled can you actually explore? Well, it turns out that you can explore all of it. Similar to how we accessed the interiors earlier in the video. We just need to leave the level using the no clip code. Then we need to drive around to where the end of the level lies. And here it is. Here's everything that they modelled before downing tools and releasing the game. You can see the floating gasoline signs up there, which is pretty funny. And you can see all the houses that were added in too. I don't believe any of them have been given the Halloween treatment though, as they're just used to create the scenery for the level. Also, I found two separate ways to leave the level and get here. One that matches the lowest level of this part of town, and one where the car is slightly higher, which seemed to match the patch of road that's nearer the bridge. On level 7, when you go near the flying saucer, the camera angle changes. It pans out so you can see the alien spacecraft in the air, above the playing fields. This doesn't just happen during the missions though, it happens every time you go near the ground below the ship. I always thought that was a bit weird. And it turns out that this camera angle was actually a very late inclusion in the game. If we play the same level on the pre-release version of Hit and Run, we can see that the camera angle doesn't change when you're in the green light. Since it was such a late inclusion, it likely wasn't refined as much as it could have been. On the game, levels 1, 4 and 7 all have several districts inspired by the show, such as Evergreen Terrace and the Trailer Park. There's also the rich side of town, which refers to the episode A Tale of Two Springfields, where the town is split into two different area codes, 636 and 939. These area codes themselves are referenced in the game. There's a big billboard on both sides of this bridge here. However, on level 7, the number 636 was changed to 686. Now, I honestly have no idea what the significance of 686 is. I can understand if it was changed to 666, but 686 is an interesting choice. Let me know in the comments if you have any theories about this. The 70s sports car is Homer's car of choice on level 7. It makes a brief appearance at the end of level 6, where Homer admits that he never sold his old car, despite telling Marge the opposite. For me, this is one of the best cars in the game, with decent stats in all areas, with its worst stat being toughness, which plagues many of the fastest cars in the game. Earlier in the video, we saw that if you smash up the pink sedan, it reveals a crate of duff in the boot. Well, a similar thing happens with the 70s sports car. Firstly, what's odd is that the spot where the rear license plate should be changes colour. It's usually dark grey or black, but it changes to silver when it's damaged. This is maybe a leftover from an earlier phase of development, where this bit of bodywork was actually silver, and they forgot to change the damaged car model, only the regular one. And the model of this car that appears in the cutscene at the end of level 6 seems to prove this you can see the same silver bit of bodywork as on the damaged car model. Incidentally, there's a similar error present on GTA 3. If you smash a Yakuza Stinger, you might notice that the door handles and emblem on the front of the car all change from silver to red. 
Also, there is indeed something in the trunk. On the right hand side, there's this mysterious silver blob. Now, I have to admit, I honestly can't make out what this is supposed to be. Going way back in development to a time where we only have screenshots of this particularly early phase, we can see that there were originally more items in the boot of the 70s sports car. Earlier in the video, we briefly talked about Springfield Penitentiary, as there's a duplicate of it lying under the level. The prison actually lies out of bounds and it's visible from the area around the school. You can get a good look at it from going up to the roof here. The penitentiary is actually one of two out of bounds items that reference the show. The second lies right next to the prison actually, and is also visible from the school playground. It's these two salt silos which reference a specific episode from the series. It's Skinner's Sense of Snow from season 12, where Homer and Ned crash into the salt silo in an attempt to free Skinner and the kids, who are all trapped inside the school. Here we are at the last item in the video, where we'll discuss some of the finer details of level 7. I love how far the developers went with the Halloweenification of Springfield. Okay, that's the last time I make up a word for describing this level's Halloween theme. When you smash a fire hydrant on level 7, the water isn't clear anymore. It is in fact now green instead, very eerie. When you're driving on the roads and you wheel spin, the tyre smoke isn't smoke at all now. Instead, it's made up of little ghosts. Lastly, when you do the same thing but on dirt or grass, you don't get dirt flying up anymore. Instead, it's bones. Also, it was only when I was recording this footage that I realised you could do burnouts on this game. Nearly 20 years it's been since this game was released and I'm still discovering new things. Amazing. I then spent like the next half an hour just doing burnouts and flying over jumps to see how far I could go. It was so much fun. Incidentally, I believe it's only the rear wheel drive cars that can do burnouts to generate a speed boost. But I haven't tested it thoroughly. It's honestly so much fun. Anyway, on that note, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something new. Either way, thank you for watching and see you next time.